what you have here is a, a situation where you know Joe Manchin was was uh, you know the the player who you know Washington really just had to sort of bend to his will, and he was really reluctant to uh, you know allow for electric vehicles to continue to get tax credits. He was opposed to them, and he said, "Okay, industry, we'll we'll give you these tax credits, but you build me a supp supply chain." Uh, that, uh, of course, you know, sort of didn't take into account sort of, you know, the complexities of the supply chain and the fact that China is just so dominant in this space. And they've really uh, sort of, you know, methodically, uh, you know, for a time quietly, you know, built this, this you know, staggeringly strong position in, in terms of, you know, the control of, you know, the inputs, whether it's, you know, nickel and lithium. Uh, graphite, uh, you know, these inputs are going to be really, really difficult uh, to, to source, uh, not only just, you know, whether they're mined in, in China, but whether they're sort of processed and refined. And, you know, the, the sort of cost difference that, that the West is going to have to sort of overcome really just can't be, you know, sort of overstated at this point. And folks, if you want to see this article, it's a fantastic article, really deeply reported, great graphics, makes it easy for me because I like the pictures. Bloomberg.com slash big take is kind of where you find it. Big team effort. So, you know, Craig, I see in your reporting here in 2023, the IRA required that at least half of the value of battery components had to be assembled in North America and that 40 percent of the raw materials had to be sourced from the U.S. And in 2027, that raw material requirement is going to double to 80 percent. Are those numbers are they can they be achieved in that time frame? I think that's that's one of the things that, uh, you know, it sort of depends on which company you ask. And I think, you know, some of the concerns that that uh, the industry is having here is the fact that some of these raw materials, the prices have really collapsed. And, uh, you know, that that you would uh, sort of think, oh, that's a good thing for the auto companies. But if you're trying to build uh, a supply chain in North America for these raw materials and the prices for them have have absolutely you know sort of the bottom has come out. I think of lithium in particular. You you've seen just this dramatic you know drop in, in prices that significantly undermines the economics of those projects. And so you know I think the raw materials in particular are a real challenge. I think battery components will be less of a challenge, but even there it, it is. You know, a matter of you can't just sort of snap your fingers and, and open up a bunch of plants for these various components. Uh, you know, it, it does take time, uh, you know, to put, uh, you know, dig up the ground and, and uh, put up these these plants that uh, are coming, but but uh, are, are taking some time. And Craig, across the automakers, I'm looking at, at the reporting again, seven of Tesla's 12 models sold in the U.S. fully cleared the IRAs sourcing hurdles and qualified for the tax credit. What percentage of EVs being sold in the U.S. are clearing that hurdle? I think because Tesla is still so dominant in the U.S., uh, we're we're at a point where you know the EVs that uh, do the most volume are largely qualifying at the moment. But I think the fact that those raw material uh, requirements that kick in next year uh, and then escalate in the years uh, that follow that's really where we're going to see even more of a sort of, you know, uh, level of, of screws put on the industry. Uh, but but I think, you know, the other car maker that I think is particularly well positioned, I would just I'd call out to General Motors. I think the fact that they have a localized supply chain uh, uh, for batteries, they have a, a joint venture with a, a Korean uh, battery supplier. We're, we're seeing, you know, more and more of those uh, partnerships, you know, Ford uh, following suit, uh, Stellantis, the maker of uh, Jeep and Chrysler, um, you know, similar deal where, where they're setting up uh, battery plants in North America uh, and sort of on and on. But those projects, I would say, are much further behind where where we have uh, Tesla, which, you know, for years has been making batteries out in Nevada with Panasonic and GM, which has a, a partnership with LG and in U.S. Hey, Craig, I think the narrative out there, just kind of the bigger picture on EVs right now is, gee, maybe demand isn't as high as we all thought at one point. We've got, you know, the big auto manufacturers pulling back, like Ford, for example. Uh, loss is still big. What's your understanding when you talk to your sources as to how people are thinking about the ultimate demand for EVs over the next one to three to five years? 
I, I think, you know, perversely, it was a, a challenge that, you know, for a time, you know, business was too good. You yeah. know? Uh, the, the fact that, you know, for a while there, uh, it, it, you know, so many companies, uh, you know, actually had back orders. Uh, Tesla in particular, you know, had uh, demand issues as opposed to a supply issue that, you know, really sort of caused this, uh, you know, unsustainable, you know, jacking up of, of prices. The fact that that has had to come down I would say more dramatically than we've seen uh, for the the rest of the industry has had all sorts of you know unintended un, unintended consequences when you uh, you know so dramatically bring down prices on the new side uh, the the used side is uh, of the equation the used vehicles uh, really lose their value and the fact that I think EVs maybe have some sort of you know particular challenges uh, with you know maintaining their value when you think about a used uh, you know, gas car, you don't worry about, you know, the engine holding up, you maybe have, you know, relatively more concern, rightfully or not, as to whether or not the battery is going to hold up. And so what we're seeing is, is uh, you know, that really come into play in terms of total cost of ownership. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things that we've really paid close attention to lately. I think when we step back, you know, the, the fact that uh, EVs is sort of, you know, the way forward, uh, particularly in terms of you know where the regulators want to see this industry go, I think we've seen that China is is able to to make this work. We've seen that Europe uh, is much further along in this transition. I think the question is, for the U.S. is whether you know whether we can sort of you know get uh, uh, Americans who tend to like bigger vehicles uh, to come around to to electric vehicles. I think that also adds some complications to the mix as well.